Hello everybody. I thought I would make a quick tutorial on what not to do when watching 360 virtual reality videos or what to do, how to take advantage of the platform and get the most out of watching 360 degree videos. Uh, I've got this camera tilted down because on the other side of it I'm going to show you how I do it on my smartphone. Um, so what not to do. Do your know, 360 video is, is a really exciting new way to look at videos because it's immersive. It takes you into the environment and allows you to look around at your own pace, almost like a video game. The problem are, is that some people just have no clue. And uh, if, if you're one of those people, that's okay because in this tutorial I'm going to help you. And if you do have an idea, maybe you can pitch in and write in the comments or in the chat to help other people sort of understand what they're doing wrong. And maybe you can even give me some tips because I'm always learning new things. So, I must see a park full of lots of little kids so they could cry at any time. We're good. So, what I have here is an iPhone 6 Plus and a Google Cardboard. What you need when you watch 360 virtual reality videos is Wi-Fi. It's really helpful to have Wi-Fi because I'm up uploading these into 4K, meaning I want you to take advantage of this world in the highest possible resolution. I, the reason why I make the 360 videos to begin with is because I want you to enter into Japan. Just like if I did a 360 video, you would see all of these kids that are like under the age of two crying all the time. It's kind of annoying, maybe somewhat like this video. So anyways, here we go. We got a three, uh, an iPhone 6 Plus and a Google Cardboard. Now, I said you, hit, you need Wi-Fi. Next, the thing that you probably need is a device with a touch screen. I don't, I like the goggles actually, but I prefer, if you had to ask me, I would prefer the, the smartphone with a touch screen and I'm gonna show you why. All right, we're gonna get to this next. This is actually uh, from the, the YouTube Spaces that I got from uh, YouTube. Uh, it, it, these are really, really useful. You could probably find these for about a, a couple of dollars in some places. There's the version 1.0 and a version 2.0. Get the 2.0 because there's a little button on the top. I'll show you all that in a second. Now, we got the smartphone here. I'm going to turn the phone around. And two things that you need to know. Um, the first thing is if you're going to use the goggles, you need to download a Google app called Cardboard, C-A-R-D-B-O-A-R-D. -A -A it's available in the App Store and the Android Store. You can get it. Without this, you can't take advantage of the app's ability to make two, um, two eye holes for the cardboard. So that's, that's the first thing. If you don't want to do that, that's okay. I'm going to show you this. All right. Show you a pile of dirt. No. Right here is my smartphone. Let's turn the screen up a little bit so you can get a better view of it. There we go. This is the iPhone 6 Plus. I'm gonna go into the video that I just uploaded, okay? All right, here we go. I have the Only in Japan page. Now this is the one that I just uploaded. You see that right there? This is the amazing Japanese hot spring and bath hotel stay 360 video. Very cool. So I'm gonna play this. All right. Turn the screen sideways. Now, if you see there's a gyroscope that's allowing you, that's allowing you to move with me. Now use your finger and you can do both at the same time. You see what I'm doing here? This is really cool. So if you want to lean up and I go up and down and I go side to side with my finger. What's down there? Oh, that's cool. The highlight of this part was those autumn colors up there. You see the red tree? Really stunning. And you can see me in the, the reflection in it to, to see what how I'm watching this. I'm going up and down with it. Use your finger. Now. Um, if if you tap the screen, the pause button and the skip button will come for a couple of seconds, and then they melt away. So if you push it, you can't navigate the screen. When but when that's away, you touch the screen, you can navigate. One more time, you can't move the screen when it's like this. When it melts away, touch it again, you can move and navigate around. This is what I want everybody to do. And if you don't do that.
If you don't do that, it's it's really hard. You're like, why isn't it moving? Probably update your to the newest version of um, YouTube also helps. YouTube is always uh, improving the platform, so you might be able to do that. So we, we got some comments here. People are doing that. So Linda's got it. Check in. Linda is is able to navigate around the screen. Very cool. Linda can do it. Everybody can do it. If I can do it, everybody can do it. All right. So this is the first way. How to stand right? How do you right? Stan, how do you watch with a flip phone? All right. If you're watching on a TV, on Apple TV, on Chromecast, if you're watching on a flip phone, you're probably not getting the 360 view. What you're getting is just, it's all stretched out. And it it, give, it, it leaves some very wacky pictures. Um, the, the 360 format was specifically made, I think, for tablets and goggles and um, uh, virtual reality gear. So uh, if you're watching it on TV or a computer screen, it's gonna be not the ideal um, viewing experience. But it's not that, I mean, it's okay, it's not that, it's not good. It's better on a smartphone. So now that I've showed you how to, uh, you, by the way, you can also do this with um, a tablet, like an iPad, an iPad mini, uh, or the Fire. You can also do this on the new Dell computers or any laptop with a touch screen. It's even bigger. So my, I have, an, I have a Dell from last year, um, an XPS 15, and I'm able to touch it and then scroll around on the Dell monitor, which is so cool as well. What I do, again, one more time, is that when this melts away, it's really bright. I'm able to, let me fast forward a little bit. When this goes away, I'm able to use my thumb. And I, I like to pan up and down. Let's click play. I like to pan up and down and move with my thumb. It stands out with the wood color around like this. Regular water would just give off a reflection. Very cool. That's how I watch 360 videos with my thumb. All right, now it's time to do it with the Google Cardboard. Now the Google Cardboard is something that I got uh, for, for free from the YouTube space because they're trying to promote more people to use this. Problem is, I don't know if YouTube's doing the best job. They're, do, they're not doing a bad job, but I don't know. I think they could do a better job of promoting how to use the 360 videos. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this Google Cardboard and show you how easy this is. This is basically just a cube. It's like a box. It, it fits in your hand. It's about the size of, of, the, of the new DJI Mavic Air, the new drone. It's quite small. It's very light. It comes with a cover. Thank you for the super chat, Chilk Suxi. Just because, I love that. It's got two lenses on it. They're basically plastic um, reflectors. They're not really expensively made, which is probably better that way. It keeps the price of it down. Now the version 2.0 has a button on the top. And what this does is, um, you're gonna see on the smartphone here. First, let me just open this up. So it's like this. Flip, flip it like this, you see? Hold on. <laughs> Sometimes I don't even know, there you go. All right, that's what it looks like. There you go, you have goggles, you hold it up to your face like this, you just put it to your head like this, okay? Your nose goes here, it looks like Darth Vader. Um, on, the, on the top is a button, and if you put your smartphone in right, you can see here that inside the here, can you see? There is actually a little magnetic tab in here that touches the screen of your smartphone at a certain spot, and it allows you to to have some control, meaning there's a little teeny uh, dot in the middle, and if you rotate it around, you can pull it down to the play button, and you can push play and stop by using this button on the top. And you can also scroll through the video, which is pretty cool. In order to use the Google Cardboard, you have to go into, basically you need this app called Cardboard. All right, I have it here installed, Cardboard. Cardboard is the Google app and it'll, it allows you to, to take advantage of the cardboard because it'll make two, but let me, let me just show you. If I go back into the YouTube app, here's the video. Do you see on the screen, hey, come back here. 
you see on the screen here, right at the bottom, there's this little Google icon or goggle icon. See it right there by the 1610? That's because you have the Google Cardboard app installed on your smartphone and you can take advantage of it. If you push that, see what it does? It creates a left and a right um, lens for, to put, to, for, for these goggles. Now, here are the left and the right and the left and the right. Now, if you put the smartphone into the Google Cardboard like this, You can now see inside of it. Well, you can't literally see because, I mean, you're not a human. You're actually through the phone, through my smartphone at your at home right now. But um, you, you're able to take advantage of this button on the top, which touches your smartphone screen. It, the smartphone's in here. You can hear through the speakers. Yeah. And uh, you can enjoy the experience. You can see the light going through it, but you can't really, you can't really take advantage. No, you won't. You won't be able to see through there. These Google cardboards, like this, very cool. I like this experience. Hold on. If I push the button, I was able to pause it by pushing the button. These Google cardboard. I think I saw them online for about three dollars now plus shipping and handling, so maybe about $5. You can get them at, um, I've seen them at convenience stores in Japan. I've seen them at um, uh, Don Quixote department stores. I've seen them at super stores. All, all the places have Google Cardboard. Those are the two best ways to watch 360 videos. Um, you don't have to buy the cardboard in order to really enjoy the 360 experience, but you can't expect to enjoy it using a mouse Thank you, Nasha Broad. You can't expect to um, enjoy the experience using a mouse and a computer because it's just a pain in the neck. Get onto your smartphone, get your Wi-Fi going, make sure that the setting is on is on 4K. Alright. I'm I purposely I, I usually don't up in 4K, but if you look on the screen here. Get out of the cardboard. You can change the settings here on the corner. It says here quality. Can you see that? Uh, captions, quality, auto. I want it on 2160S. You can change this. Boom! We are in 4K. I settle for nothing less. And then you can take advantage of. Okay, it's on the lightest, brightest uh, contrast right now. I've also made four other 360 videos that you can enjoy. One of them was my question and answer about why I came to Japan. So I hope you guys enjoy that. All right, I'm going to take some questions. If you have any questions about using Google Cardboard or using 360 video or some problems that you might have, go ahead. Right now is your chance. Ask away and I will respond to your questions. If you already know how to use it, you can turn off your uh, turn off this video and go to one of the 360 videos to enjoy it right now. What is that contraption? Can you eat it? Um, no. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? You might be able to. If you boil it into water, you could probably make a little cardboard stew. Um, make sure your device supports 4K before you enable it. Uh, Sir Pop-Tart, that's good advice. Most phones, though, I think from iPhone 6 Plus on have 4K uh, a compatibility, but you want it at the highest possible resolution that you can get. What is your favorite thing about the Samsung Gear 360? I use the Samsung 360 to make the videos, but quite often I get the audio separately and I insert videos from the GH4, GH5 into the video to add to add more interactivity. I like the Samsung 360 because it's simple. Um, I know it, the, the best thing about making the 360 videos is that everything is in focus and everything is in the picture. So you don't have to worry about the framing, you don't have to worry about the angles, you don't have to worry about that. Just the height of where the camera is and boom, push play. You can edit it, in, I edited it in Premiere Pro. First I used the, the Samsung Gear 360 software to stitch the two lenses together. 
Then I take that stitched video and I I rent I um, edit it in Premiere Pro. I have the twenty the new one, 2018. But since two years ago, you can edit 360 virtual reality video in Premiere Pro pretty seamlessly. It's quite simple. Uh, it's, and it's a lot of fun to edit, actually. I have, I have to be honest with you. It's a lot of fun to, because you can tell, tell stories in a different way. The reason why I add 360 into it because not everybody likes it, but, but enough people like it and feel like they're there it, immersed into... I can move this up a little bit. They feel like they're there and immersed into Japan through it that I keep making this these videos because I want I want to bring you with me and 360 video is just one tool that I can use to share Japan with you uh, so John can you show us how to edit 360 someday um, you know what there's a lot of tutorials on YouTube already that's how I sort of learned uh, it's not too different from editing a 360 video is not too different from editing a 2d video the the thing you have to keep in mind is that uh, you have to make sure that the specs in your timeline are are correct, meaning they are 4K, they're stretched to a 2 to 1 aspect ratio, and other than that, the, the sky's the limit. If you put assets, which are inserts, uh, above and below the middle of it, it gets distorted. So I try to keep all inserts a little bit higher or lower of the line or right in the middle of the, I call it the equator, and that's right in the middle of it. Uh, Marshmallow Rabbits, I love your 360 videos, Miss Japan so much. Okay, thank you very much. I, it, it seems like a lot of you know how to use it, so I, I'm hoping that this tutorial will help those who don't. Do the videos work in VR headsets? Yes. Um, this is Scratchy Panda. Uh, somebody who uses the Oculus goggles wrote in and made a comment that he was able to enjoy it in HD. Unfortunately, his goggles don't do 4K video yet, but um, again, the, this, eight, the, the difference between quality between HD and 4K to me is big. It, it goes from being okay video to like, whoa, like I'm inside of this thing. Because the 4K, the, the 360 world is so big compared to, um, compared to just a 4K monitor, this 360 world is in front of you and behind you and to the side and below and top. So 4K is probably not even enough of resolution to really get involved into this uh, world. You probably want 8K. And maybe that's why the technology to 8K is going to be so important. I think it's important to the virtual reality world. I want the resolution as clear and sharp as possible. So that that's um, why I think you need to have 4K, 8K minimum. Yeah. And the sensors right now, the Passport to Nowhere. Thanks for chiming in. Yeah, you need 8K minimum, I think. And you, you need cameras with a higher sensor, like a better sensor. The ones right now on the market, they all have really like one and two thirds uh, inch sensors, really small sensors. You don't get a lot of dynamic range, you don't get a lot of um, uh, detail, but it, it's good enough. There's no reason to buy a $5,000 or, or $20,000 uh, virtual reality 360 camera at this point because even those don't do, they, they're, they're very clear, but they don't have like a massive difference, I think, co compared to the, con to the prosumer or the consumer ones that are the newer 360 videos. Um, the 360 cameras, the Rico Theta from about four years ago, they were when they first came out. Those, the quality of it was was awful, but it was just cool to be in that into that world. People were just amazed by that world. When the Samsung Gear 360 came out, it kind of opened the door to the prosumer market. It's still a consumer tool, but it's good enough that it can be considered prosumer because it's at 4K resolution. The bit rate could be higher, but it's not bad. Um, yeah, and nobody can afford a $20,000, unless you're a professional and you're doing this for a living, you, you can't really afford it. Even the rigs where you have to put like eight GoPro cameras on it, I'll tell you what, the GoPro camera does not have an amazing dynamic range. And for the price it costs to buy all those GoPros, the cameras with two lenses are, are enough. I think if you see in these videos that I make, there there is a seam around it. That, that's sort of annoying, but it's it's okay because I think the experience that you get for the other 99% of the screen is pretty darn good. Um, wait, right, not 4K for 360. Um, you should watch it at 4K, Michael, but if you're able to watch it in 4K, watch it in 4K, but it would be best to watch it in 8K, but we don't have those cameras yet. And the bandwidth would be amazing. Like you'd have, it would cost you so much money if you were watching it on your cell phone on 4G. You need, you would need Wi-Fi or connected to something. 
you know, 5G is just around the corner. It should be hitting Japan next year and it'll be definitely mainstream before the Olympics. So the reason why these live streams, the reason why these 3K, 30, 360 videos, the reason why um, live streaming like, like I'm doing right now is gonna explode is because of 5K, uh, 5G, the next generation of um, mobile signal, uh, Wi-Fi, uh, wireless telephone signals. It's gonna be able to handle so much bandwidth. I'm gonna have 4K coming at you through this phone. And this is coming probably either at the end of this year or early next year here in Japan. We're gonna be able to do this. I'm gonna be able to do live streaming with 360 video. So I have to have this channel to keep it, uh, to, to, to build an audience so when that time happens where it's just like, we're gonna be right here. And I'm gonna be used to talking to you through this. Yeah, 4K on an iPhone. This already does um, decent 720p streaming I mean it's decent because if you think about it it wasn't too long ago that um, TV news crews were doing like 480p or grainy videos with a, a van they would have a van parked in the back with a satellite dish and a big camera plugged in with a guy in a machinery we could do this all with one device the iPhone or an Android phone it is amazing but you can't nausea broad wrote in about the iPhone X you can't really take advantage of those specs using live streaming the best phone for live streaming right now is, is an iPhone 7 Plus, in my opinion, because you have the two lenses, which allows you to zoom. It has a 1.7, um, an f-stop of 1.7, which allows you to get decent low light and pretty good, pretty good gauss. You can get good bokeh. Look, if you look at my hand, you see the background? Here's my phone. You see the background gets blurred? See that? That's pretty cool. It's because the lens is, is, is not bad on the iPhone 7 Plus. The front lens, the selfie lens could be better, but you know, I, I only use this, I, I, I don't mind it being uh, in focus all the time. So D Desert, Desert Art Steve, I'm watching in 720p with this live stream, awesome. That's HD, that's, that's pretty darn good for live streaming, I think. Uh, if you don't know how to use the arrow keys to pan around in 360 video, this is a comment from uh, Just Tay P, uh, if I pronounce that right. Uh, press those arrow icons on the left and right. Yeah, you know, you can do that, but I'm telling you right now, on your smartphone, using your thumb, you don't have to deal with the arrows and look down at the keys. To me, the easiest thing easiest thing to do is to just use your thumb on your smartphone on the screen and, and to pan around. If, if uh, None business, what phone do you use for recording? This is an iPhone 7 Plus. This is an iPhone 7 Plus. This is an iPhone 6 Plus. This is the phone that I had before this phone. I bought this from Apple. I didn't get a contract. I don't have a, any contract. I kind of do it by, by the month. I'm a rebel. Um, yeah, you need to have, I think the iPhone 6 Plus is okay for streaming. The iPhone 7 Plus is a beast with live streaming. It's, you really wanna have that because it also picks up more, um, more LTE, 4G LTE signals, which is essential when you're live streaming. You want a good, strong signal. What would be the successor to 360? You know, Swift. Th this is a comment I got. It. This is this is pretty. This is a. I I've been thinking about this. You know what I would love to do? Like hologram video. Like if if I can get the data and it, the right cameras, you need a lot of them around you. But to 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 hologram into your house and bring you where. You, I think in the in the future, TVs might be just that hologram in the center of the room and you'd be able to sit around the hologram or somebody can be sitting there and you can use your thumb to rotate around like this and the hologram would rotate while you're sitting in place or you could sit around the room. I think that might be the future. I don't know. Uh, but I remember in the 20, was it the 20, 2008 or 2016 election? Um, I mean the 2012 or 2008, CNN had uh, a correspondent on location hologrammed into the studio and it was pretty cool. I don't watch a lot of CNN, I don't watch a lot of news, um, but that was, I thought that was pretty cool. You could probably see it on YouTube if you, if you do a CNN uh, election night hologram. Uh, that might be the future. AR is the future, that's right. A, uh, M, Amab uh, Uchiha, uh, the, uh, e, uh, AR means augmented reality. It's sort of, ins it's, it's the ability to insert things into the, into the screen into your vision of view to add to your experience. And these are things I'm gonna be experimenting with the channel. 
not a lot of people are using 360 video. Not a lot of people are uploading it on YouTube. In fact, of all the Japan uh, YouTubers, I think maybe there's only one or two other YouTubers who've done it. And even that, those YouTubers, um, they don't do it very often. And I like to try new things. I like to be disruptive. And, and that means that it, it could be to my detriment, meaning I could lose subscribers, I could lose viewers, but if you're not cutting edge, I'm telling you right now, if you're not cutting edge, if you're not pushing the envelope, if you're not trying to go to new levels, to new heights with your content, people are gonna pass you. People are going to leapfrog you, you're, you're gonna become irrelevant, you're gonna become, uh, you're gonna have a popular channel, heat now, and then everyone's gonna pass you. You know, so I'm always trying to go like this, and I'm always trying to stay one step ahead of everybody else because a lot of YouTubers have been making videos about it. But YouTube is a sport. YouTube is a competitive sport, and I'm friends with a lot of YouTubers here in Japan. But if if they do something before me, or if I give them an idea and they do it, and it was a good idea, they're the first ones to get there. Sometimes that means that when I make my video, it's not going to be as popular. It really is a sport. 360 is a tool. This live streaming is a tool. These are things that I use to enhance the experience for you, the viewer. Not everybody likes the 360s. Uh, not everybody likes the live streaming. That's why I have a dedicated channel for both of them. The 360 channel does not do well, so I don't have a lot of videos, just one. Um, that's getting demonetized by YouTube this month. Uh, any other questions? I, I want to end this before 30 minutes hit. Have you thought about getting an iPhone 8 or an iPhone X, uh, iPhone 10? The iPhone 10 is not worth it to me because I'm a live streamer. I don't need the I don't need it. The iPhone 8, maybe if I break this, I would get the iPhone 8. But the iPhone 7, I, I I've seen reviews on the iPhone 7 and the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 10. And the camera on the iPhone 7 is pretty darn good. In fact, many people have said that the iPhone 7 Plus camera is better than the iPhone 8. You tell me what's wrong with that scene. So I think with, if you have an iPhone 7 Plus, you're probably good for another year or more. I mean, there's nothing wrong with having an older phone. It's just a tool. Um, right now in Tokyo, it's it's 2 p.m. Are you aware that Amazon did Netflix is coming out with their own YouTube channel? Probably. YouTube, and it, uh, this is the last thing I want to stress that's not related to, to this stream, but YouTube is... is I, I just got, uh, every YouTuber who has over 10,000 subscribers has access to a partner manager at YouTube. And I have a really awesome partner manager. He helps me a lot finding a way. Thank you, Ian, to Otaku for the, the super chats. Gosh, I really appreciate it, guys. Uh, I have a really awesome partner manager at YouTube who, who helps me with the analytics and finding ways to make better content for you. The reason why I, I, I can either do Google Hangouts with him or I can go to the YouTube space in Tokyo in Rapungi and meet with him at the office. And I like to go to, to see him face to face because um, I think that meeting people face to face is the best way, even though we can do it through live streaming like this. And every time I go to meet him, he's so encouraging and so helpful and gives me ideas that I didn't know were possible and things with the technology that are evolving that I didn't know were out there. The use, th this came from from YouTube space, okay? And that's where the that's where my uh, skills for 360 editing and, and video production has really increased. He gave me a lot of tips. Um, the partner manager before him, she was a really awesome person who gave me a lot of tips too. So uh, what, that's what really impresses me with YouTube as this platform. There are lots of platforms, but w one reason why I, I stick with YouTube for now is because there's so many wonderful people there that are changing the platform, that are really helping me evolve with the content. I, I care about the monetization. I, all the videos, including this one, probably will become demonetized for the next 12 hours, which hurts my bottom line, which hurts my ability to finance the videos because everything I do now is through the Super Chats, is through Patreon, is through the ads that I put in the videos. I'm sorry if I put in maybe a little bit more than I need to, but all of the travel, all of my living costs now are, are come through YouTube, um, through these videos. And uh, YouTube, f for now, is still like an amazing platform. I, I, between 2006, I was one of the first people to put 
videos on the internet actually. In 2006, that's when I started before. I started making videos for the internet before YouTube. There was iTunes and the iPad, iPod video. And uh, the thing with iTunes and Apple is that you, the, the uh, consumer generated media producer, CGM producer, you have to pay for your own bandwidth. I had my own server. I'd upload my, the videos to my server and I would pay for people to download my videos on iTunes. iTunes is an awful platform for consumer generated media. Um, that's why I, Apple doesn't invest anything in podcasting. Apple doesn't invest in improving it or promoting podcasts on their platform on iTunes. It's an awful, awful platform. And what YouTube is, all consumer generated media. It's us making video content for you. And that is awesome. I can't tell you how much this has evolved to where I was on a Apple platform and I moved to the YouTube platform. I would, I would have still been on Apple if they had a way to monetize and made it simpler for, for um, creators to make content, but they didn't do that and they don't do that and they don't care about consumer general media. media. Uh, you do, you know, YouTube does. So for that, I thank YouTube. Apple did lose and they are losing. They're losing big. The more that they fight with you, right now YouTube is, is main, more people watch YouTube than TV. More people watch YouTube than, than um, anything else right now. It's just everywhere, anytime, it's amazing. It's an app on every platform and you can't get better than that. that it gives you tools like 360 video, live streaming. There's so many ways to connect with you. I, I'm blown away, uh, maybe because I'm, I'm 43 years old and, and when I grew up, we didn't have the internet. We didn't have, we had like Atari 2600, <laughs> that was it. And even then, there was a time before we, did, we didn't even have that. We had like blocks and, and you know, our parents would make toys for us, that's <laughs> how old I am. <laughs> they would make like things out of wood and screws and stuff, you know. But nowadays we have so many tools and, and toys and electronics and things are disposable and things move really fast. We have Netflix, we have live streaming. We have ways for a guy like me to be able to connect with people like you on the other side of the world, all over the world. It's just, it's just exciting, isn't it? This is an exciting time we live in and it's changing so fast. That's why I make the 360 videos. I make it to bring you with me and take advantage of the moment that we're in right now, the virtual reality world. Um, what are your plans for upcoming videos? I'm going to Hokkaido this week. I believe I'm going to Hokkaido this week. I just got permission from the place I'm going to film um, yesterday. So now I have to book the ticket and I have to leave, I'm thinking on Wednesday, or if I miss that, next the next week. But I'm going there to film in Hokkaido. Uh, it's, a, it's a secret theme. As I said, YouTube is a sport. I'm not giving any other YouTubers any ideas, but I'll be in Hokkaido and it's minus it's like minus 20 where I'm going. Minus 10, minus 20. It's pretty cold. I'll be live streaming there too. Um, yeah, it's gonna be pretty fun. Uh, I'm not, I'm sort of looking forward to it because I've been in, I've been in the cold before. Um, any other questions before we leave this? Why are they demonetizing the videos? They're demonetizing the videos because um, it's mostly to protect, this is what I, I talked to with my partner manager, but I. I I'm, I'm not going to quote him because I'm going to paraphrase, I guess, what I think I heard, so I could be wrong. Um, there's a lot of the sponsors or people who buy the ads are, were concerned about some of the content that was being put on, I, on, on YouTube. And in order to make the content, uh, in order to keep the sponsors, to keep the videos monetized, they had to concede certain restrictions on videos um, that were, would make the sponsors happy and keep them monetizing. I mean, the sponsors probably could have walked away. This is what, what I understand to be true. Um, so YouTube is in a tough spot, but I think that they're a little bit too, too generous in demonetizing. I mean, they demonetize too much. If this is a learning machine, they should know that I would never put up a video that's going to um, with 630,000 subscribers, 640,000 subscribers on the main channel. I'm never gonna put up anything that's embarrassing. Every single content that I put up there is family friendly or has a warning like the Kanamara Matsuri. Um, I'm very um, conservative in the sense I don't like to use bad words or show something that's inappropriate. And if I do, I, I'm very quick to apologize, as you know. Yeah, um, but 
you know, there's there's been situations where that's not the case. And when somebody like uh, a certain YouTuber who came to Japan a few weeks ago does what he do does, it hurts us all as a community. It hurts us all as viewers of content. It hurts creators who make content for you to watch because it takes money away from them. If it wasn't for Patreon, I can't I can't tell you how how thankful I am to Patreon. There's about 250 people. Um, who support me on Patreon and it's the most amazing community of people because I'm starting to get to know their names, I'm starting to get to know um, their, who they are, where they're from. A lot of them are signed up for the postcard club which I send a, an original postcard I make from the thumbnails of the videos uh, and a little message on the back every month. The, that, that makes up for the demonetization, I'll be honest with you. It's enough for me to get back and travel. Um, It'd be nice if YouTube didn't demonetize the videos, but with Patreon and, and other forms like, like Super Chats, this is a big percentage of my income in order to keep traveling, in order to keep um, making high quality videos and not worry about the demonetiza demonetization of YouTube videos. Um, yeah, it's, Patreon is, in, is a wonderful place. I, I don't think the Patreon team works hard at improving the platform. I don't think that they, they I think they're happy with what they have right now. I think they need to they need to hire staff and improve the platform. I think if YouTube had a Patreon like system, I would probably uh, leave P Patreon and go to YouTube. But it's hard for me to trust YouTube um, with the money because with the super chats, they take thirty percent. I did the math um, looking to see how much a, a super chat came in and how much YouTube takes. They take thirty percent and I, uh, the creator gets 70%. And I, yeah, I think you should know that when you give a super chat. I don't get all of it, but, uh, I, but if you didn't super chat, that would be, that would stink. So, <laughs> I mean, 30%, Onion Head, 30% is pretty darn high. I think 15% might be better. I don't think they need to take 30%, but at the end of the month, they do, they do send the money, and I am able to use that to pay for my rent, to pay for my bills, and to travel, and to stay out longer, and to say no to projects. I said no to a TV job a couple weeks ago. They asked me if I could do a location shoot uh, for Japanese TV, and I said, I'm sorry, I, I can't do it. I'm, I'm focused on this. I'm focused on making content for YouTube, uh, and uh, that felt good. That felt good to be able to say no to a job that would take me off of this. So, uh, Twitch is probably higher. Hello Panda, Twitch, and there's a bunch of other platforms that are really good. But I, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm still satisfied with YouTube. I'm still satisfied with the quality uh, of their of the people there. I'm satisfied with how they treat the creators in general. It's not perfect. I, I'm, but I'm not going to cry about it because I've been in places that were much, much worse. Kent does stuff, thank you. Um, John, because of your videos, I met my Japanese fi no way. I met my Japanese fiance, you've changed our lives with your videos. I'm sorry I can't afford to donate more right now, but uh, I, oh man. That's really, that's really nice. Uh, I'm so happy. Just shout, shout out to Kent, wow. Um, that makes me really happy to hear. You met your fiance in this. Oh my word! That is, that's really amazing. Wow. You know, I, I never realized that the show would have that, such an impact on people's lives. That, thank you for sharing that. Um, YouTube has beta test was beta testing a subscription with Simon and Martina. Yeah, I I talk with Martina about this. Um, I'm Simon and Martina are. are two of the most awesome people and I don't want to talk about other people too much but I, I have to say they're two of the most awesome people and whenever I have the chance to hang out with them I try to do that you know I hang out with Peter and Jennifer and Kevin but they're pretty darn cool too and uh, I'm, I'm happy that they're they're here in Japan Wow Kent man thanks thanks for that story that's awesome congratulations yeah um, all right everybody thanks for the thanks for watching this live stream I hope I hope the purpose of this was to help you with um, 360 video, but we might have gotten off topic a little bit. Thanks for watching. I'm going to do more live streams maybe later today. I actually have to go to the Apple store to, to fix this iPhone. Uh
my Apple Care is still is still okay. So I made an appointment to go to Omotesando to go to the Apple Store. So if you're in Tokyo and you go to the Apple Store at, at around 4 p.m., I might see you there. <laughs> I bet I bet you some people show up, and I might do another live stream in Omotesando. Anyways, um, thanks for watching the 360 video on the main channel. Thanks for watching this live stream. Congratulations, Kent. Thank you for the the live streams, everybody. Uh, I, I appreciate all of the support. I'm gonna turn it around so you can see this this crazy playground that these kids have been uh, watching have been have been playing at for the last 30 minutes. Bye bye. <laughs> That's where they were. I think we only had two or three people crying. Not too bad. See everybody. <laughs>